G'day tubers, it's been a while, right? Turns out the neglect fairies jumped up, smacked me in the side of the head and said, Q Pete, what are you doing? Now about three months ago, I did a battery check and I found one of the cells was a little bit low. I fixed that up, I found I had a self-discharging cell. Didn't look at it again, I thought all the rest of them were at 3. Point, was it 3.75 volts or something. Pretty much what I left it at when I, I balanced them all and put them in a resting voltage. Uh, I need to walk out here yesterday afternoon to find, I think it's this battery here, was just under two volts. I can't remember exactly. So the neglect fairies have really kicked my ass. Um, I could have damaged the cell beyond repair. I'm not sure. But what I'm going to do is going to take the chance today to show you how I'd find the fault and how we go about fixing it, I guess you'd say. Now I've already had a quick look at this one off camera and I thought, nah, it'll make a good video. And it's almost obvious where the fault lies. There's a couple of cells there that you can see a problem with, but they're not a problem for the, for the reason you'd think they were a problem. So there might be something else at play here that I can't see and I need to charge the battery back up. But given that it's under, under two volts, I'm gonna have to charge it up really, really slowly. Let's have a look at the voltages of all these batteries after six months of sitting here, doing not a great deal of anything. Let's get to pulling this apart and have a look. So let's have a look at cell one, get the polarity right. 3.73, 3.75, 1 1.54, that's the bad battery. 1.73, 1.73, sorry, 3 points, uh, that was 3.74, I think I said 1.73 before. 3.74. 3.73, 3.74, 3.68, so that's a little bit lower. 3.75, 3.76, 3.97. Now this is the prop one I had a problem with, so it literally rebalancing with the rest. And 3.74 volts. There you go, I'll put it on the ground. But there's nothing loose. Now this is the key part to look at. Up here is three cells that has been, um, they're zero volt, well they were close enough to zero volt cells, I'm fairly sure they were zero volt cells. Um, and they're not connected, but they are connected here, just for a little bit of extra mechanical strength there. I think I might have done that after the fact, I'm not sure. As you can see, there's nothing much to see on that side unfortunately, until you turn it over. The first thing I can see is this here. A discoloration on that cell there. Now these are not connected, yet there's some sort of leakage happening. Um, there is a little bit of pressure, so that cell there is probably the only cell that touches that mount there, so there is a bit of pressure on that particular cell, but there's no deformation of that cell at all. It's still nice and round, but I can actually feel like a rust underneath that cell. Um, now, I, off camera, I have gone through every other battery and I can't see any signs of any damage or anything else. But more importantly, up this end. Focus, come on, look at that. Now that is actually, where is it? I got the multimeter yesterday. And I put the multimeter on and it went through the top of the cell. So, and that one's a bit rusted there as well. But like I said, they're technically not connected. So if I got the multimeter, now I, I, I said these are zero volt cells, but I genuinely can't remember if I discharged every cell to zero volts or just one volt or whatever, but I definitely put them on a discharge cycle. So I'm gonna put the positive there and the negative here. We've got 0 0.01 volts. Get a scratch around and there we go that's one and a half volts not sure if you can see that you can one and a half volts that one's 0.64 of a volt and that's 0.58 of a volt now i'm not sure whether or not that cell could have somehow contacted there it's to my mind there, there's no contact there at all on the negative side so even though that cell's gone south, there's no potential energy in, to, in it to cause a problem. And it's a different voltage to the rest of the battery. So it mustn't be connected. It mustn't be that that's a fault. 
there's no other cells that I would, you know, look at and go, eh, you know, maybe that's a problem. As you can see there, slowly over it. That's one side. So the nickel strip hasn't rusted or anything like that. So I'm still happy with the nickel strip. I'm not happy with how I've got it sitting here on the edge, but I don't actually know how to fix that. Um, but there's no other visual with the cells that are connected causing this to self-discharge. So the challenge will be how I find a cell in here that's faulty. So I've got the battery up here on my workbench. Uh, so it's nice and close to where I work so I can keep an eye on it. Uh, so the plan is I'm going to charge it up. I've just got my bench power supply. Uh, so it's about 2.13 volts and at one amp. So I don't want to, I don't want to charge it much more than two volts, maybe two and a half volts. But I'll do it at one amp, so it's going to take a really long time to slowly charge back up. But the community has spoken on how to actually charge these batteries when they're low, and that is really, really slow. So that's what I plan on doing. We'll bring it back to life again. Now, I did test this on the 11th of the 6th, 2020, and it tested that at 482 amp hours. So once I've done this process and found the dead cell, I'll retest it again, and we'll see what the amp hour of the battery is. We'll work out whether we've lost any capacity. All right, a good couple of hours later, it didn't take as long as I thought it would to recover that voltage. Um, I've never really watched it, should I be honest, but we're at 2.78 volts and it's doing 0 0.02 of an amp charging. So it's doing almost nothing. In that process, I was constantly touching it and trying to work out whether I could feel any heat using the thermal camera to see if there was any thermal problems with it at all and you couldn't see anything. Now one of the problems with the FLIR thermal camera and a reflective surface is it just glows at you and gives you a false positive. So you've got to hold it at a nice angle like that to be able to read anything. But now we're going to charge it up to 4.2 volts and we'll do that as fast as we can and the iCharger X6 will do that at 30 amps. So we'll run a, a charge through it, charge it all the way up, see if there's any obvious faults with heat and again we'll be checking it constantly and I'll be doing it in a safe place. And then we'll go through and if we can't find anything charging it up, um, it'll take a lot longer to discharge it. So the longer it takes to discharge at 30 amps, the more accumulated heat and we'll see, hopefully we'll be able to see a problem. Now, if you don't own a thermal camera, one really easy way I worked out of doing it in the early days, and I do the Playstations and Xboxes and stuff like that, the board repairs, is to get a little icy, icy coal or um, isopalopropane, I think it is, and just dab it on each one. And anything that's hot will evaporate quicker than the rest. It is a really redneck and cheap way of doing it, but it does work. Um, it's even better, and this sounds weird, and I've never actually done it with a battery, but you cool the battery down so there's a bigger difference between the hot and the cold and you can see the, the difference or even feel the difference a lot better when you just put your fingertips over it. So there's a couple of ways of actually doing it if you don't own a thermal camera. Okay so this is my little test rig. Um, I've had this set up for quite a few years now and it works really really well. Um, these are all my third life batteries. Um, so basically all I've got is a positive and negative coming in, well negative and positive coming out into an Anderson connector and underneath there it's nice and neat and tidy and then goes down into the iCharger X6 and it's saying it's 2.8 volts and it just fell on me thank you very much um, and then I've just got the little balance leads plugged in and that's opposite end so I've got the positive balance lead there and the positive lead there and alternatively the negative down there and the negative at that end so it's opposite ends so you've got the voltage at the top comes from the bigger cables here and then the voltage on the balance, uh, 2.816 or 817, is the smaller one. So that just tells the actual voltage itself. So now we're going to charge it all the way up. So we're going to click that. Go to LIO. Go to charge. Yes. That should crank up to 30 amps or something like that. We'll just let that run. We'll come back a little bit later. I just stopped the charging there for a minute just so I could do a couple of um just a couple of physical tests to the battery to see if there's any problems now apart from a bit of heat going down that bus bar you can't see any hot spots there yet this is what i was talking about earlier when you go up on top it reflects off the 
nickel strip so it's a little bit harder to see hot spots you still can see them though so that bit there will be a drop of solder so it's a little bit more reflective it's actually not hotter um so yeah we're about two hours in i think two hours in at 30 amps i just started um charging again so that'll be by the time it's reset doing 100 watts 30 amps it's at 3.4 volts now so it's coming up nicely it stayed at like 7 amps so like an hour or something and then jumped up to, to 30 amps so let it run for another couple of hours was it 3.4 volts i'd say another five to ten hours maybe here we are uh, about 24 hours later now unfortunately my poor x6 fan has died and it keeps failing right at the very end it's actually turned off and it actually is overheating um, so I'm gonna have to use the ISDT T8 which works a treat it's just got a really noisy fan but it is much bigger so on cue thank you very much uh, so what have I found so far well I've used my thermal camera the whole time little FLIR thermal camera that plugs into my iPhone and I can't see any noticeable heat difference from any cell there however we've come across a result that wasn't at all expected so there we go it's just overheated so i'll turn that off anyway it's a close enough to maximum voltage pull that out of there pull that out of there let's grab the thermal camera and have a quick look at those cells we've got the three blue cells here the one two three and there's no heat there's nothing there's no heat in any of those cells that you can see i'll go back here a little bit further for scale and there's no real warmth in that whatsoever bearing in mind we just had the the charger sitting on top here top down view i find if you go a little bit further away it's a little bit better to have a look at that nickel strip but there's nothing there that stands out that's hot now this really does leave me uh, at a loss to know what's actually going on. So grab the multimeter again. I really want to try and point out that these cells are not connected. Um, they are connected at this end, but this whole entire thing is negative on the outside, as we know underneath here. And there's nothing connecting them through there. There's no way that they can touch there. They've got the little green insulator rings underneath there. And on this side, there is no connection. So what I might do now, well, I'm going to have to replace out those cells somehow. Um, it's not really hard to replace these cells out. To replace them out, all that you've got to do is knock the little tabs off on one side, and you just knock the cell through and put another one in there. So I'll do that a bit later on, but not now. What I will do, I'm going to take these bits of nickel strip off, and once I take these nickel strips off, that should stop any potential energy going into those cells. Let just pick these off. I thought this was a really good idea at first. Clearly not. There's one side. And this side's doubled over. It's actually folded around a bus bar and then that all come off so that wasn't soldered on there that well oh yeah so that bus bar is off let's take another really quick look at the voltage of each of these cells so we can see the rusted one at the bottom there it's 3.72 4.11 now once I disconnected that why did that go to 4.11 volts 3.72 and that one's got zero volts so we're just going to let 4. those 1 sit 1. for another couple now, of hours I we'll come back and that. check those voltages again one one against volts. what they were a couple of hours later I'm honestly at a loss as to explain the behavior of these cells now this one as you can see in the previous clip that was one one and a half volts or something the one with the rust on it and now it's zero this one and this one were about half a volt 
This one's 4.11 volts, which is the same voltage as the rest there. And that one's a little bit higher as well. Yet there's no connection. There was, I can't see any way that these, although they must be right, are connected. Let me know in the comments section below what you think it is. Uh, I'm not gonna touch this one now. I'll just run the voltages again on these three cells. That's 3.728. This one was at 4.11, so that's the same. And that was nothing. And it still is nothing. I wonder if I connect to the positive side over here. Now that's... Okay, that's really, really odd. Uh, can you see me here? I'm touching that to the positive. So I'm posit negative here and positive to the bus bar. Yet if I go to the negative side of that actual cell, there's nothing there. Explain that to me, YouTube. Here I am trying to share my knowledge of what I've learnt, and I think I know less than when I started this video. Stay tuned for the next video. We're going to knock these cells out and try and work out what the hell's going on. Thank you very much for tuning in. I enjoyed making a video again after all this time. If you're still here, smash that like button. If you haven't already, hit subscribe. It really helps. And I'll see you, you, on the next one.